Let's unbox and take a look at the Ryobi 4 inch by 36 inch belt and 6 inch disc sander. So I'm starting to make my own bases for my models and I needed a belt sander. I was looking around, my favorite brand is Rigid, but they didn't have something quite like this. I picked up this Ryobi or Ryobi, depending on which way you say it, over at Home Depot for $199. This has a four inch by 36 inch belt sander with a six inch disc sander on the side. The six inch disc sander can go from zero to 45 degrees and the belt sander can go from zero up to 90 degrees. We're gonna unpackage this guy, show you what he's all about, and we'll try to do a little bit of a test with it. The box did come in weighing at about 43 pounds total. If you don't have a big shop uh, like I do or some of the other guys, probably not gonna be able to use this in an apartment. You're gonna have to find another way if you wanna make your own bases. So let's unbox this thing and see what we have inside. So this is everything that comes in the box. It comes with the machine, comes with the one disc, Comes with another plate, also the plate for your angle cuts, the guide for your angle cuts, and I think this is for the 90 degree guide, but once we go through the instructions, we will put it all together on camera, this way you can see how it goes. It comes only with one belt sander and one disc, and they are very coarse. These are the only ones you get. They don't add any others for when these run out on you. So you are gonna have to buy multiple sanding belts and discs afterwards. Instructions, not the greatest. Um, it tells you everything that you have to do word wise. I am one of those people that like to see pictures and diagrams of stuff like that. So you're gonna have to read through this and see where everything goes. I'll read it, then we'll come back and we'll put everything on piece by piece so you can see how it goes together. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is put the sanding disc onto the metal disc on the machine itself. They didn't even tell you to do that in the instructions. Easy enough to peel the backing off. Just try to center this and get it on there pretty perfectly. So that goes on easy enough like that. And your sanding disc is together. To, they're telling you to insert the work table index pin. That's this little pin right here. And there's a hole on the side of the unit that this is gonna go into. The next thing you're gonna do is you have your table lock knob and a washer. I'm just gonna put the washer here. There are markings on the side here. It's a little sticker with how many degrees from zero to 45. So if you're gonna go further off, you can't have it in the middle of a table like this. You're gonna to have to have it on the edge of a table. This way that table can fold down. Also, this does have three holes in it to lock it down to a workbench. So you're just gonna take the knob that I was talking about before. You're gonna put this in the position you want it in. I'm trying to get it to zero and just lock this knob down tight. This really isn't that great. There should be some kind of metal uh, attachment. This way you can get a perfect zero or 45. Looking at how this is with just the little sticker here, I don't think you're ever gonna get a perfect zero or perfect 45 and tighten it down. You're gonna get pretty close, but not perfect. So what you just seen me messing around with it again, I actually put the little lever below zero, then tightened it down and it actually brought it back up to zero. When I had it on zero before, it brought it up to about two or three degrees. So this part I'm really not liking. Uh, as long as I can hold it and get a flat sand, that'll be fine with me. Next up is working with the work support, is what this is called. I have no clue where it goes by how the instructions are written, so I'm gonna actually have to look on YouTube. And the piece that I did get actually is all scratched up already. I didn't even get it, it's, it's got a lump in the paint. I can sand that down and uh, fix that myself, but that's kind of disappointing to pay $199 and you get a chipped up piece. Okay, after looking at the machine a little bit, we do have this plate, we have these two screws, that have uh, hex nuts or allen key heads on them and they actually give you the allen key that you need for it. Because the machine is black, the two holes are actually here on the reverse side from where we had the sanding disc. So you're gonna find those two holes over here. So we're gonna take that plate and we're gonna put it over here and then we're gonna take the two bolts that they gave us that have washers on them already and we're gonna lock these into place and we're gonna tighten it down. and those are in place. And I missed a totally important piece on here, so I'm gonna show you that now. I'm actually gonna to have to take the arm off that we put on before, which is no big deal.
The piece that I did forget is the sanding guard. Now unfortunately, they don't tell you which way this goes, so I'm assuming it's going to go this way because of the circle here. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, the sanding guard goes that way. It doesn't tell you up or down or anything on this piece. You just have to look for the rounded part here, the rounded part here. There's an edge on this side that is going to go towards the sanding disc itself. You're going to place that sanding disc on there. They give you two little Phillips head screws with locking adapters. Just get that into the hole. It's not really that easy to do. And screw that side down. Now that's locked in place so the other side will be a bit easier. That is fresh plastic that you're going into. I wouldn't recommend taking this off too many times if you don't have to. Uh, we're going to have to take it off to change the disc, but eventually with unscrewing and screwing this thing back and forth, we're going to elongate the plastic and we're no longer going to be able to put this piece on here. So a better design would have been to put two metal eyelets in here, if that's what they're called, with the screws. This way you can screw it in and out as many times as you want because eventually this is going to fail and you're not going to be able to have this guard on here anymore. Now that our guard is on here, we can go back to putting the pin in the side. Again, you just find the hole, the screw hole on the side here, which isn't the easiest thing to do. And we're going to set our angle. I'm going to push it all the way up, which will be below zero. I'll tighten it down and it should have brought it back up to zero. And unfortunately, that's still not on zero. I have not hit perfect zero on this yet. I I'm really not happy with this, this portion of it to get it to a level zero. So hopefully when I do sand on this, it'll come out fine. Another feature on here is they do have a port where you could hook up your shop vac to it. This way you sh turn on your shop vac and you can suck out all the dust instead of throwing the dust everywhere, which we're going to do for this demonstration in a little while. I'm going to hook up my shop vac to this. Here's on on off switch. Up is on. Down is off. There's also a slide guide here. This way when you have your piece and you're using your sanding disc, you can either keep it at a zero and slide across or the little knob turns here. You can adjust all the way to a 60, and you can adjust to 60 all the way back from zero to 60 either side. Then you just lock it down and guide your piece across. Okay, to remove our belt to replace it, again, they tell us to remove the, or loosen the positioning bolt, which they do not show a diagram of on the instructions. So again, it leaves you to guess and try to find where the positioning bolt is. On the rear here, you're gonna see a little bolt at the back. The hex key that they give you, or the Allen wrench, will go in here. We're gonna loosen it up. That'll let us raise and lower the arm. There is a little bolt under here, so don't loosen it too much, otherwise you're gonna lose that little bolt. Let's see how easily this lifts up. So we can lift this back up into position, but once we do that, if you wanna sand on a 90 degree angle, like we have right here, we have to get back to this positioning bolt, which is not the easiest thing to do. So if we really wanna get this off, we're gonna to have to take off this piece again to get to the locking nut so we can go in a 90 degree, which I did not see that in the instructions itself. But they're saying once this is here, in this position, we're supposed to be able to pull this lever up to take off the belt, which that lever does go up. And can we slide this off? Not that easily. There we go. Just push down a little bit and it'll come out. And we could push this off and we could put a whole new belt on here. Just make sure you adjust it so you see a little bit of the, the spindle up here showing. Lock that back into place and our belt is on. And then if you want to leave it like this, take this off, lock this up. But if you want to sand again down this way, after you change your belt, put it back down and we're going to tighten up our locking nut over here again. 
Here's a little bit of a safety feature that reading the instructions I just found out. We're on the on position right now, of course it's not plugged in, but once you do hit the off key, let the belt sander come to a stop. Once it's stopped, this little yellow piece right here is actually a key. You can pop that key out, put it in a safe place. If you don't want anybody touching your belt sander, it's not going to work. The the switch is just going to be floppy and it's not going to turn it on or off until you put the key back in. Once you put the key back in, you're in the off position, click, you'll be able to go live again. This here knob is called your tracking knob. So if you are sanding and your belt is starting to slip either way, turn this knob, and it doesn't tell you in the directions which way, a quarter turn. So. This is going to either pull it out to make it tighter, this way it stays on the drum at the end here, or it's going to loosen it up because it's too tight. So you may have to play with this on your first sanding. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click the unit on just to make sure that that belt is not sliding back and forth. Just be careful and remember, both of these discs, the disc and the belt will run at the same time, so watch your hands. I would suggest if you're sanding something up top, I would do it from the reverse side of the machine instead of the front side of the machine. This way you don't run the risk of putting your hand over here. Let's check out that safety feature. Now that it's stopped, we'll pull out the key and nothing works. We'll pop that key right back in there. Now, one of the other things is this machine only runs at 1900 RPM and it does not have a variable speed switch on it. Right now I'm working on some 3D printed stuff, and I don't know if you can see, but from the support marks, there's a whole bunch of little pin marks here. That's what I want to get rid of. I want to smooth this out and some pin marks in the front. So we're going to test this out. We're going to turn on both machines. It might be a little loud. We're going to turn on our vacuum, and we're also going to turn on our belt sander and see how smooth we can get this. Even before we do any of that, I don't know if you notice this little guy here. When you do turn on the machine, he starts marching forward. So if you're going to use this, make sure you're holding on to it. You're going to have to hold on to it so it doesn't go anywhere. But if you're not using this, I would suggest taking this piece off. I just wanted to make sure I had my vacuum set to the right way. Because when I was using the disc sander... The resin was just flying everywhere. It wasn't sucking anything in. So I'm assuming this part is uh, only going to suck dust from the upstairs here. But it did a very nice job. Exactly what I needed to do. Took those nubs off the front. I'll be able to polish this out later. I am going to have to get some finer grits. Find finer grits, especially when I'm working on the resin. And I want a smooth finish on wood also. So let me do it on top here. I'm going to go around the other side. And then we're going to flatten this part out. And hopefully it does it nice and quickly. So that's it. We got her out of the box. We built her. We got her running. She did what she's supposed to do. So let's go over some of the pros and cons of this machine itself. One pro of it, I like the weight on it. It's not going to go anywhere shifting on your table, but if you do want to screw it down, it does have three screw points where you can lock it down to a bench and leave it there permanently, semi-permanently. This way you can unscrew it and move it if you have to. Another feature that I like about it is the safety switch where you can take this key out and nobody can mess with your machine, especially if you got little ones running around and they do go into your shop or something like that. You don't want them touching this, accidentally turning it on and getting their fingers caught in the spindle or something like that. That would be uh, pretty horrific. Another, uh, sorry, another pro would be that you can lift this arm up to different angles from zero here all the way up to a 90 degree, depending on how you want to sand. Another, another nice thing is you do have the disc on the side. This table goes from 0 to 45, and your sled here goes from 0 to 60. So that's, that's a nice feature of this also. I'm trying to think of any other pros on here. Uh, th that's, that's pretty much it on the pros. Oh, one more pro is the price point. Price point isn't bad, $199 for the machine. 
Um, it, it's made fairly decently from what I can see, and, and it's got a few nice features on it. So we'll go over the cons of the machine. One, the, not even the machine, the whole package. The first thing I would say is a con is the instructions on here. Even though they didn't give us pictures of where everything is while we're supposed to be building it, you kind of had to search and figure out what was going on. It would have been nice if they gave you a picture key of what the parts are. This way, when they call it out in the instructions, you know exactly what it is. Picture instructions are so much easier instead of trying to read it and, and put things together. Another con is you only get the one strap for up here and one sanding disc for here. Would have been nice if they added two or three of different grits that you can change out one to another. Another problem with this, and uh, it's a major con for me, is with your side table here for your sanding disc up front, you only have a little sticker here on the side that tells you from zero to 45. And when you do put it at zero and you lock it down, it actually jumps up a few degrees. It jumps up two or three degrees, so you're not at perfectly zero. What would be nice is like, uh, I guess maybe a little, a little metal piece on the side with a bubble or a needle of some sort where you can lock it in and really see it's something better than the sticker. The locking me mechanism doesn't really work too well. So when you are doing this, make sure that what I did is I went a little under zero, tightened it down, and it actually pulled it up to zero. So you're going to have to play with that to make sure that it's at a zero. Um, the, uh, the one con with, you guys saw the metal on here was chipped up and that came from the factory. That's pretty bad quality control on here. Um, this, this should have came perfect. You know, there was no way that somebody at Home Depot throwing this around would have scratched it up because it was inside plastic and it was inside huge styrofoam. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't have, uh, been scratched up like that. We should have had a perfect piece of machinery that came out. The suction on here, well not the suck, the suction for my vacuum is perfectly fine. I think because I was doing resin, resin went everywhere because it's a lighter, finer mist, so it really couldn't grab it. I think when I do wood, it should be fine, but I'll find that out in the future. If it does not uh, suck through the port over here and take up most of that sawdust and the chipping that'll come off of here, that would probably be another con, but I really didn't test it on wood, so I can't really say anything about that. Overall, a very nice machine. Uh, if you're interested in buying it, I found it at Home Depot for, like I said, $1.99. Uh, Ryobi's not my go-to. Rigid Rigid would definitely be my go-to, but they didn't have something like this. But it's gonna be an important piece of machinery for me doing my custom bases. If you have any questions or comments about the machine, just put it in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can about what I know about the machine so far. And you will see it being used in an upcoming video on my Green Hornet build where I have to sand down the frame. So thank you everybody for stopping by. It's always a pleasure seeing you and talking to you. I hope you're all doing well. We'll see you all soon. Take care and bye-bye everybody.